so good to be with you tonight and we are so glad to meet up with you again once again on this beautiful Monday night. It's the grace of God that carried us and uh, so welcome wherever you're tuning in from Namibia, Kenya, Zambia, North America, um, even New Zealand and Scotland and wherever you're tuning in from. Um, share it with your friends and uh, may God bless you and increase you on this beautiful night and we honor God for his goodness, his mercies and his grace. So tonight I would like to speak on the subject of the kingdom of power. But before um, we going to go to the kingdom of power, I've got a lovely, beautiful couple with me tonight and I just want one of them or both of them just to share the experiences that they had in short, in five minutes, what the Lord has done to them. And uh, so the lovely couple, you are so welcome. We are with them tonight and we're so great to be with you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. We're so glad to join you this evening. And uh, the rest of the, the viewers that's, that are watching us and partaking in this, this evening's sermon, um, I would just like to share my experience that I had on Sunday morning. Um, it, was, it was just supernatural. It was awesome to be in the midst of the Holy Spirit. And um, just after Pastor Robert's sermon, uh, our celebration, celebrating women, our strength, um, and uh, after uh, Pastor Robert's sermon, we, uh, Apostle Lionel just broke into worship. And just in that worship session, just in that point in time, I sensed the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit was so powerful. And the, the, the atmosphere was so saturated. And um, I'm so grateful to Apostle for giving me an opportunity to even close the service in prayer because I couldn't have... I couldn't have prayed without the Holy Spirit. I just, I just surrendered to the Holy Spirit, and um, I just gave over. And the Holy Spirit just lifted me. And uh, there was a point in time I just felt I didn't know what to say and what was again good to say in my prayer. But um, the Holy Spirit just came in and intervened. And uh, I'm just so, I'm just so grateful to God that um, we can be His children and that we can just. Um, tap into His Holy Spirit and allow His presence to lift us up because anything is possible um, in, in His presence. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. Thank you. So grateful for what God is doing in their life. Amen. Um, they are the younger generations and we know His grandfather was a pastor, His father is a pastor and we honor God for them and there's a great heritage of faith in their family as well. Many of the, his uncles were also pastors. So it is so good to be with you tonight. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for the testimony. Tomorrow night, beloveds, we will not go live at, uh, I will I say at nine o'clock, but we're going to have an open air service tomorrow night in Elsie's River. And we believe God to do something. It will be maybe probably for an hour, hour and a half. We trust God for his power to move souls to be saved. And uh, so tomorrow and Wednesday night, we're going to reach out in the community. Uh, some people um, accuse me in the past. We don't do open airs. But, you know, the first 15 years of my life, I've been busy almost nine months in a year, open air services do tent meetings, do all kinds of evangelistic things. So it's not that I don't want to do it. We believe in God's timing. And we also believe that the people must be willing and ready to do it. So tomorrow night we will do it. And we give trust the Lord and we give him the praise, the glory and the honor. So my first scripture that I will go into is in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, 19 and 20. 
Um, the Bible said, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord wills, and I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Um, beloveds, we need to understand there's only two kingdoms. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. So, the kingdom of God is opposing the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of Satan is opposing the kingdom of God. So, if we operate in a lesser power than the kingdom of Satan, we will give way. So, why the kingdom of power and not in word only? The reason is, beloved, wherever God manifests himself in power, there will be a reaction of the demonic. And if we don't understand, beloved, when power manifests, whatever is not of God will manifest. I know in many times that uh, some people didn't like our meetings because of certain things that happened. Um, people are screaming and whatever, but I tell you one thing, when God brings deliverance to people, to me that is more important. So where the power of God is manifested, the power will expose the power of the enemy. So there are only two kingdoms, there are not three kingdoms, there's only the occultic power, the power of Satan, and then there's the power of God. One thing I know in my life, that the power of God is always greater than the power of the devil. So Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5, he said, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in deep conviction. Three things that happened. It came, the gospel did not come in word only. We cannot present the gospel of the kingdom in word to the world. We got to present the gospel of the kingdom in power, in the Holy Ghost, and with deep conviction. If you're not convicted in your spirit that you need the power of the Holy Spirit to assist you in doing the work, Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we are actually defenseless. Amen. With the power of God, we have the weapons through the power of the blood and the power of the word to counter the work of the enemy. Because the gifts of the Holy Spirit operate through the power of God. And when power manifested, there will be an explosion of supernatural things that happen. And the power of the enemy will be this, uh, exposed. Now when there's an exposure, uh, an exposure of the power of the enemy, there will be a manifestation of the power and of the glory of God. Amen. And only when people, are, the sick are healed, the sick are delivered, Demons flee in the name of Jesus when those who are full of drugs, when they are delivered in the through the power of the Holy Spirit, then the name of the Lord is exalted, the name of the Lord is glorified. The name of the Lord is not glorified through sickness and disease. Amen. The name of the Lord is not glorified when somebody died of cancer, died of all kinds of so, uh, HIV AIDS and uh, through crippling disease but when somebody's healed the Bible tells me there is joy in the city there is joy when somebody goes through a hard time and through sickness and disease and there's no manifestation of power what happened is everybody goes through a hard time yes. their joy has been removed Amen. they worried about will the person live but when power comes and it manifests, it destroys the work of the devil. Amen. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, tonight it will be my favorite, Acts chapter 10 verse 38, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
with the Holy Ghost and with power. So what happened was Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. So we need to be anointed by the Holy Ghost. We need the anointing of power upon our lives. So without power, we cannot go around and do the works of Jesus. We cannot see that Jesus, you see, all we are, we are vessels through Amen. which the, we allow the power of God to touch people's lives. So you cannot touch people's lives if you reject the power of God. You got to receive the Holy Spirit. You got to receive the anointing of power because Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Amen. And can I tell you something, beloved? If Jesus needed, who is God, who is the Son of Man, who came down to restore man back to God, if he needed to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, how much you and I, <coughs> as a human being, we need anointing of power and the Holy Ghost more Amen. than Jesus did. Because the anointing brings the presence of God. It destroys the yoke. We know that Christ means, the name Christ means the one who is anointed with power. Amen. The anointing of power to break yokes, to destroy the works of the devil. And God placed the church. He put them in a place that they will carry the anointing of power. That is God's desire for the church. We cannot be in lockdown. We cannot be knocked down. We need to rise up. When they prophesy by the government and by Bill Gates, they said there's a third wave coming and it will be so severe. You can only know it that it's coming unless you're a prophet. And don't tell me that Bill Gates is a prophet, that this government is a prophet unless it is planned by the devil. We know this is created. I mean, at one time they got some stuff from China and I think it was masks and it was contaminated with a disease. So they exported the, ex the disease into South Africa. How many diseases are exported all over the world? So what we need is a power demonstration that the God that we serve is alive forevermore. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. God didn't give you a spirit of fear. You know, if you listen to the news, Every time on our phones, they send us messages to tell us um, if you don't wear a mask, you're going to go in jail when you're in public. They can arrest you. Why? Because they promote fear. I mean, beloveds, if you walk down the street with a mask on, I feel sorry for people that sit in an office eight hours a day with a mask on. Because they breathe in their own toxic, foul, dirty air, stinking air, come from your own mouth. So when you get the virus, you die because your lungs is already polluted. I mean, this is common sense. I never went to varsity or been a scientist, but when I was at school, they told you, you need fresh air. Why suddenly you need toxic air? Somebody is selling you baloney. Somebody is selling wrong stuff. And I will not be duped by the enemy. What happened if you go to the mall? I have to go into the mall, put it on. But the moment I walk out or sit at a table, I take it off. But not longer than half an hour when I go to the mall. I don't see myself polluted by dirty, stinking air coming out. I mean, I don't want to be crude or rude. 
But if you have to smell your own fart the whole day, <laughs> what will happen to you? He said, Pastor. He said, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. What is that power for? Power over all the works of the devil. The Lord told the disciples in the book of Luke, He said them, Go and wait in Jerusalem until you've been endued with power from on high. Why is it that Jesus told them? Because He realized they cannot do the works of God without power. Amen. He said, Wait in Jerusalem. And you will be endued with power from on high. Thank you. How many wants to go out and do the works of God without power? Go and wait. In the city of Jerusalem. And you will be endued with power from on high. God is the one that will give you power. He is the one when you wait upon him. He will manifest his power in your life. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Tells me. That the Holy Spirit came upon them. In power. They waited upon God. And Jesus actually said to them. When you wait. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. In power. So if you don't wait upon the Lord and receive an impartation of power, you will be powerless. That's why you will run into your cave. But it's the Holy Spirit's power that will manifest through you, will do, that will do the works of God through you. It is not your own power. It is God's power. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7, But you have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the excellency will be of God and not of us. Amen. So power come from God, not of us. Amen. I love that verse. In Psalm 62 verse 11. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard. Power belongs to God. Amen. Psalm 66 verse 7. He said he ruled forever by his power. So if you want the kingdom of God to manifest, it comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God cannot manifest um, without the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why he told his disciples, go and wait in Jerusalem. Amen. So that you will be endued. There will come an endowment of power. It will come upon you. Yes, but if you're born again, you receive power. Yes. But power to do the works. When you are born again, the power of the Holy Spirit transform you. Amen. But now you need power upon your life. And in, in, in Acts chapter 1, 8, he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Hallelujah. You cannot be a proper witness of the kingdom of God. If you don't have the Holy Spirit come upon you in power. Amen. In Luke chapter 4 verse 10 the Bible tells me. Uh, 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 Luke chapter 4 14 he said. And Jesus came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. If Jesus can came out of the wilderness. The time of seeking. The time of penetrating. The time of praying. Waiting upon God. That his power will manifest upon your life. Oh I, I'm reminded of the times and the season. At one time I lost the anointing. And it cost me severe prayer. And intercession. Seeking the face of God. That God will release and reveal his power upon his life. And I begin to seek the face of God through fasting and prayer. 
I would spend hours in prayer, but I didn't feel there was power. I didn't feel there was an anointing. But as I press in, Amen. the power of God came upon my life. And as I soak myself in the word of God, and as I listened to anointed men of God, like Reynard Bonker and uh, Benny Hinn and others, and read the, the testimonies and the, the works of Smith Wigglesworth and Dr. Kenneth Hagen and all these great men of God, there came the stirring in my spirit. Why? Because if you don't stir yourself to begin to walk in the anointing of power, because we have to manifest the kingdom of power. Wherever Jesus went, the kingdom was manifested. I remember the one time there was a man that was naked in the tombs. Jesus spent time in prayer and he came and when he came to Gennesaret and when he got to that place that a demon possessed man he came down of Gadara he came down and he fell before his feet and he said uh, he said to Jesus you know, he came down and he worshipped, he bowed down. And when he bowed down, it was a manifestation of a demonic spirit of a religious demon. Because he knew how to worship. Number one, he was naked. He was operating in the spirit of lust. He could have maybe be a priest that fallen on the wayside. And then the Bible tells me, he was bound with chains, but no chains could hold him. There was a demonic spirit that was so violent. It, it might, might be a, a man that could not control his temper. And demonic spirits came and lived in him. But when Jesus came, there was a power encounter. Amen. And that power encounter that Jesus could and release those demons and it went into the pigs and the pigs didn't even want those demons let me tell you today there are many people that so bound with the, by the enemy unless the kingdom of power manifests unless the presence of Jesus manifests in that place they will still be bound I, I'm here to tell you today beloved when power comes the kingdom of darkness must bow in the presence of the Almighty. Amen. I remember many times, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, it happens that uh, you face difficult situations. Sometimes you have to pray for hours to get somebody being free. Sometimes there's, there's the presence of God that manifests in your life. I remember one time I went to a house, I was called, and this lady came from an Indian background. And the husband called me because he prayed for three months. Deliverance over his wife. The demons continue manifesting. I went into the house. I talked to her. She brought me water and coffee and I drank coffee. And then I just after that, I just ministered to her first quickly the word of God. And I led her into a prayer. And the Lord set her free. Amen. Why? Because there's a, a ministry that God plays. The kingdom of God is not in word only. Amen. He prayed, he prayed, but nothing happened. Yeah. The man was upset because it didn't take me 12 hours sure. or 15 days or whatever. Within a few minutes, she was delivered. Why? Because of power. Amen. Power need to come upon your life. We need to have the kingdom of power being made manifest into this world. In the book of um, Mark chapter 3 from verse 14 to 15, and he gave unto his disciples power to heal the sick and to cast out devils. He still 
wants to give you power to heal the sick and to cast out devils. Every believer need to be able to manifest the kingdom of God. Yes, those, they are those who have the special grace and gifting to have this ministry of deliverance. But by the authority of the word of God, every believer have dominion. Amen. Every believer has dominion over the works of the enemy. So that Paul said, listen, I did not come to you with word only, but I came to you in power. Mm -hmm. When I minister the word of God, I refuse to minister the word of God unless the power of God manifests. I cannot spend my life, suffer for what we suffer, and there is no power. God needs to show himself mighty and strong on our behalf. Why? Because he wants to. We ask him to manifest himself in power. We ask him to show himself mighty and strong on our behalf. Why? Because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of power. There's no manifestation of power unless the kingdom of God is manifested in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to know God. We need to see God. We need to seek His presence. We need to be in His presence. We need to trust Him that He will come and empower. I love the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, I place a demand on the presence of God wherever I go. I want to see God manifest Himself because I know in myself I can do nothing. In Mark chapter 3 verse 14, He appointed twelve that they might be with Him and that He might send them out to preach. And to have power to heal the sick. You must have power to heal the sick. And to cast out de demons. How does it happen? Waiting upon God. Allow God for the anointing of power to come upon you. Jesus went into the wilderness. He was already full of the Holy Spirit. Already baptized in the Holy Spirit. But he did not operate in power. There was a a waiting period. Power can be an, imparted by the laying on of hands, by receiving the baptism. By see, if you want to increase the power upon your life, you need to seek God. You need to seek His presence. You need to be hungry for God. The more hungry you are, the more desperate you are, the more the power of the Holy Spirit will manifest. There's one scripture that I love. The Lord revealed it to me many years ago and that is in the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 1. And I see it in my life manifest. Then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Amen. He gave them power over all demons oh, and to cure diseases. Let me tell you, if you're a disciple of Christ, that's why I, I, this gospel of grace that's been manufactured to get the church powerless. The only thing it, it does, it draws a lot of people. You don't need power. You don't need to pray five hours a day, ten hours a day. Or lock yourself up for 40 days and wait upon the Lord because grace has given it already to you. No. The disciples, they ask for the Lord to anoint them. In Acts chapter 4 verse 29, they said, Lord, look at their threats. Look at what they want to do. Yes. Grant unto your servant that they will speak your word with boldness. And after they prayed, the whole place was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That was not the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
That happened in Acts chapter 2, but they ask again. So we need to be continually filled with power. Verse 33, the Bible said, and with great power, the apostle testified to the resurrection of Christ. We cannot do the works of God without power. We cannot minister going to hostile territory where the enemy rule and reign in the place of gangsterism, in the place of violence, in the place of witchcraft, divination and sorcery. You cannot enter those territories unless you go with the dimension of power, that you are uh, baptized in the Holy Ghost and with power and with deep conviction. Yet he was convicted in his spirit. That's why in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, Paul said that I might know him in the power of the Holy Ghost. If you don't know him, you can only know Jesus by his presence and through his word that I might know him. This was a man that saw signs, wonders and miracles that wrote most of the book of the New Testament. But let me tell you, he was hungry for God. You want to know him in the power of the Spirit. You know, this is so powerful. He called his 12 disciples and gave them power. To cast out demons. Mm -hmm. And in Mark, I think the scripture that I really wanted to read is Mark chapter 9 verse 1. And he said to him, As surely I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death. Till they see the kingdom of God come with power. I want to speak to this generation. You will not see death. I prophesy this word over your life. Amen. I think more than 25 years ago, before I even went into full-time ministry, this thing jumped out in my, it was like a revelation. I It, it bounced up of the word of God and I saw it, that God said that, that you will not see death until you see the kingdom of God comes in power. Amen. I want to Jesus. prophesy this word over your life. You, you will not see death. Jesus. I said you will not see death Amen. until you Jesus. see the kingdom of God comes in power. Amen. I want to read it again, beloved. And he said to them, as surely I say to you, there are some standing here that will not taste death. Till they see the kingdom of God comes in power. Amen. Now the New King James said, present with power. Mm. I like the NIV that said, well, come with power. Amen. So the kingdom, when it manifests, it manifests with power. It manifests to reveal the glory of God. It manifests to show the world that he rules forever by his power. His power need to manifest in our lives, in our churches, and wherever we are. We all know the scripture in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, where Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the kingdom. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the gospel that we preach is the gospel of power. That's why today I'm not ashamed to tell the world that we serve a God and the gospel that we preach come forth in power, it come forth in the Holy Ghost, it will come forth in manifestation of power. It will come forth to reveal who God is, is the God over everything. Luke chapter 10 verse 
18 and 19, Behold, I saw Satan fell like lightning from heaven. I saw Satan fell like lightning from heaven. Amen. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and over all the works of the enemy. What is the enemy we face today? We face poverty. We face lack. We face uh, witchcraft, domination, and sorcery. We face rejection. We face that the enemy come, camouflage himself uh, in our life through sickness and disease. And the doctors come and tell you there is no cure. I'm here to decree and declare right now. He said over all the power of the enemy, my God is still a God. And where he reveal his power of resurrection, I pray today that power of resurrection will come upon you that you will experience the living God in a new way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth he wants to reveal himself the kingdom of God is not in word only but in power so he wants to manifest his power he want to manifest his word. He want to show himself mighty and strong on your behalf, on my behalf. He want to manifest over this world that Jesus is Lord over all, over all, every disease, over poverty, over lack, over every satanic force, every satanic altar. That's been raised up against the house of God. Right now, I release power by fire and by force in the mighty name of Jesus. That every word spoken against your life, everyone that made incantations against your life, that power will manifest and destroy every demonic altar. How does power manifest? Power of God manifests through fire. Power of God manifests through sulfur. And where the power of God came into being, I mean Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed through sulfur and fire and broomstone. Today they can't even locate where Sodom and Gomorrah was. Why? Because there was a manifestation of power. Power. Amen. Over all the works of the devil. I want to tell you, beloveds, the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. Amen. He came to set the captives free. He came to deliver everyone. You've got to believe the word of God. You've got to stand upon the word of God. You've got to believe that the word of God is true. It is yesterday, today, forever be the same. In the olden days, we used to sing that song, Only Believe. All things are possible, only believe. Tonight, if you believe, God will manifest himself in power upon your life. Tonight, I'm going to pray like the church prayed in the book of Acts chapter 4, 29. Today, I mean, beloveds, some people will tell you, use wisdom. Don't be a lot of people together because you will spread the disease. But Jesus came to destroy sickness and disease. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Satan's works is any form of sickness, whether it's a plague that's been planned and delivered to this world. I want to tell you, there is enough power in the name of Jesus to destroy all sicknesses, yes. to destroy all diseases. Yes. Every disease is subjected to the power of God. When power comes, yes. disease will have to go. Amen. So we need to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament says, beloved, wherever they went, in Acts chapter 5, it talks about Peter the Apostle. The anointing of God was so strong upon his life. 
that ever way he went, his shadow would heal people. Amen. They would bring the lame, the cripple, and they would say, if only his shadow would touch them, they would be made whole. Amen. There was a, a currency of power. And the reason there's no power, because there's no prayer. There's no seeking God. We have become a church that is comfortable to present Christ by word only. I'm not satisfied by word only. I'm only satisfied by a demonstration of the power of God. Let me tell you, I will preach hard that nothing is impossible with my God. He can heal the uh, the impossible. He can cure the impossible. He can do what no man can do. There's no one greater than the God that I serve today. Every power of the enemy is subjected to the word of God and to the power of God. Amen. I want you, wherever you are, stretch your hand towards your device. Those who are watching it on TV, some of you are able to. Those of you that are watching on your phone or tablet, wherever you're watching from, stretch your hand towards the device. And you ask God tonight and said, Lord, you commanded your disciples to go and wait until you've been endured with power. Tonight by the presence of God, yes, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and by the power of God, but you will receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you and you shall be my witness. You can only be a effective, effective witness if there's the Holy Ghost come upon you mm -hmm. and the power of God rest upon your life. If you want me to pray for you to receive power, while we are here, we can to pray together and then you can to pray with us, say what we are saying. And we believe God tonight that the anointing of power, wherever you are, the power of God will manifest. Some of you will feel like hot oil coming upon you. Some of you will feel fire in your body. But power will manifest upon your life. The Holy Ghost power is available. Pray with me this prayer, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. As I come to you. As I come to you. You commanded your disciples. You commanded your disciples. You commanded your church. You commanded your church. Go and wait in Jerusalem. Go and wait in Jerusalem. Until you've been endued with power from on high. Until you've been endued with power from on high. According to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. According to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power. But you will receive power. When the Holy Ghost come upon you. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Right now. Right now. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Come upon me. Come upon me. Let your power come upon me. Let your power come upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The power of the Holy Spirit is falling upon you right now. I pray right now for a manifestation of power. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, fall upon your people. Fall upon your church. Fall upon them right now. Anoint them afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Do in their life what no man can do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you gave your church power and authority Amen. to heal the sick. Thank I pray Jesus. the anointing to heal the sick. Thank Let Jesus. it come upon your people yes. right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Some of you will feel it upon your body. Some of you will feel it upon your head. Some of you will see it in your stomach, feel it in your stomach. Some will feel it in your hands. The healing anointing and the power comes upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Some of you never spoke in tongues. The anointing will come upon you. You will be endued with power. You will speak with a new tongue. Rabba Satan Alamandia. Robo Satan Alamandia. Anointing of God flows through your people right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Le manda la bakurubonda ria satana la manda la bakurubonda. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus for what you're doing in your people's life, in your family's life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, do what no man can do. Do what no man can do. Do what no man can do. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Freely we are received and freely we give tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for those who are oppressed by the enemy. I pray that I break the power of sickness and disease, the spirit of infirmity upon their lives right now. Every demon of cancer, every spirit of Alzheimer, I command it to go right now. I command the brains to be healed. Every bacteria, I speak, I speak over their brain right now. New brain cells to be formed in the mighty name of Jesus. Cursed be the work of the devil. Cursed be the work of the devil. I pray for those whom the doctors have given up and said, Two months to live, three months to live because of cancer, because of lupus, because of all kinds of diseases. I come up against the spirit of death. I speak and I pray right now. Resurrection power. Resurrection power. Hold them this very hour. Raise them up for your glory. I rebuke death. I rebuke death. I rebuke death. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke diseases. I cast you out. Out you go. In the name of Jesus. You shall live and not die. And declare the works of my God. I come against this demon of sugar diabetes. Heart diseases. I I curse your work right now. I command you, devil, out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Out you go in the name of Jesus. I speak a new heart, new arteries, a new pancreas. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody your lungs is giving you problems. Right now, I speak a greater miracle. Right now, you will feel like a fire, a heat coming upon your body. Your lungs has yield in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be set free. I release the miracle working power upon your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody suffering from TB. Right now I curse that form of disease. I curse it right now. Your demon of TB. Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. In the mighty name of Jesus. I command every sickness to go tonight. In Jesus mighty and glorious name. I speak healing. I speak restoration in the mighty name of the Lord. Be set free, be made whole in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do what no man can do. Do what no man can do. Raise the dead, cleanse the leper. Set the captives free. Father, you still the God that opened the eyes of the blind and stopped the ears of the deaf. I pray right now. Let your miraculous, your miracle working power, let the gift of faith and miracles come once again upon your church. Let the prophetic unction be stirred up in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, beloveds. I'm going to ask 
Brother Don, to just close for us in prayer. And we thank God you might not see him, but you will hear him tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you for this day. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you are a gracious God. Yes, yes. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your power. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that where the word of God is preached, there is power, there yes. is deliverance. And I pray that this message that went across the airwaves this evening, we thank you firstly for the oracle of God that you used this evening. I thank you for the, for the anointing upon his life. And I thank you that he's a vessel of your glory and of your power. And this word, Lord, that has been ministered this evening, that the kingdom of God is not just in words, but in power. I thank you, Lord, that for this reason, the Son of Man came to this earth to destroy the works of the devil. And we thank you, Lord, that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray that this word will set people free, that this word will heal people, that people will receive breakthrough, that they will be healing and miracles upon their lives. I pray that the presence of the Holy God be upon their lives, that your presence and your favor will follow them, that you will go out before your people this evening and beside them and from behind them, that they will experience the great and the mighty works of God in their lives this evening. I pray for the favor of the Lord upon everybody's lives that have heard this word. I pray that that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I thank you that your word is true, that it is alive, that it is a two-edged sword, that it searches the hearts and the, the minds of men. But I thank you for the Holy Spirit that is the preacher and the confirmer of your word and I pray Lord that the Holy Spirit will come alive and illuminate the word in their hearts this evening I rebuke the spirit of infirmity I rebuke the spirit of the devil every demonic entity we cast down their doors the iron doors and we kick Lord them open and I pray that your children will step into their destiny I pray that this word will come true for everybody that this word will come alive that you will come and look upon your people this evening with favor and we cast out the devil in the name of Jesus. I pray for the country of South Africa this evening. Lord, that you will show us your mercy, that you will show us your favor. We thank you, Lord, that the Lord that we serve, he is a son and he is a shield. You give us grace and you give us glory. And Lord, you promise us that you will withhold no good thing for yes. those that walk up, that walk up yeah, righteously. Thank you, I thank you, Lord, that the children of yes. God will come in unison yes. this evening so that we will believe, Lord, that yes. we will be saved, that South Africa you, will be saved. We yes. break yes. the spirit yes. of Corona over this country, Jesus. over the world, you know, over those, Lord, the globalists and, yes. Lord, the Illuminati that wants to bestow in curses upon this world. We the curse them yes. in the yes. mighty in the name of Jesus. We rebuke them in the mighty name of Jesus and we pray that your word will come through in people's lives this, eve, this evening. We pray a special blessing upon those that watch this broadcast this evening. Upon their children and upon their, fa or no, upon their families. I pray for their finances Lord that you will bestow miracles and a breakout for, for many people this evening. Lord for those that are in distress that will give them the joy and the happiness because you haven't given us a fear of, of, of fear, a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and of a sound mind. And Lord, we look to you for guidance. We look for you for your power and your favor. And we know, Lord, that the, the victory is in you this evening, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for everybody that believes this word. I pray for everybody that will use this word in their lives, that will apply it in their lives, that they will be sound and that they will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon them. I, I bless every person this evening. I bless them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that you will give us godly dreams and visions. 
And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will fill this earth tonight with the power and with the knowledge of your glory. And we will never forsake to give you the praise, the glory and the honor as we pray it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Beloved, once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. And remember tomorrow night, we probably on from seven o'clock for an hour or so. We gave to have a wonderful open air in uh, Elsie's River. We trust the Lord for beautiful things. God bless you. Amen.